we start by um, your name, where you're from, and the organization? My name is Berkay Avşar. I'm from Turkey, Ankara, and I'm a member of the Communist Party of Turkey. Excellent. Okay, and how has the events at Gezi Park influenced how your party operates and the popularity of the party? Because uh, the Gezi Park resistance, the June resistance, uh, in other words, uh, affected affect the country uh, in many aspects and our party too. Uh, for instance, our party doubled its members in Istanbul uh, during the resistance and uh, in many other cities we opened new bureaus, new offices and our existent offices uh, expanded indeed. And the prestige of the party in the country of course increased. Uh, that's because the I don't know if you know about Gezi Park resistance, the June resistance. Uh, started with the uh, a little ecologist resistance in the Gezi Park. Uh, the police attacked uh, three days consequently uh, with morning ambushes. Uh, they just set uh, the tents on fire and uh, after the third day, uh, exactly the uh, 30, 31st May, I guess, yes, 31st May, uh, the people just they got out to the streets, uh, night of the 31st May, which connects to the uh, 1st of June. Millions of people mobilized in this process, in this re uh, resistance. Uh, according to the uh, domestic, min domestic, foreign, uh, domestic Affairs Ministry, uh, internal affairs, or uh, more than 10 million people joined the uh, demonstrations physically or from their homes just uh, making noises with the uh, things. And we see that the Gezi Park resistance have some core aspects in, in its nature. For instance, the anti-imperialism, the, uh, how can I say, anti-privatization and nice secularism. In, uh, in many ways this just uh, reflected itself in the uh, prohibition on the alcohol consumption or prohibition of the uh, some uh, lifestyle uh, precautions uh, which the government take took. Uh, so we may say that the Gezi Park resistance has three main aspects secularism, anti-imperialism and anti-privatization. The things that led up to Gezi Park were was that corruption and favoritism of companies over the interests of the people? Uh, not exactly, but the, there was a tension between the government and the people uh, just accumulated over uh, 11 years of the AKP's, uh, the Justice and Development Party's government. Uh, people just accumulated their anger, their, uh, how can I say, uh, their hope for a new and better life. And the Gezi Park was just a spark, a spark, and, and everything just blew up. For instance, the, uh, just as I said, the anti-imperialism, uh, which reflects uh, concretely on the Syrian issue. The AKP government tried to wage war on Syria, and Tur Turkish people was not uh, agreed to this campaign. So this also blew up in Gezi Park, for instance. AKP prioritized almost everything in the country. People's, uh, and peoples of the Turkey just deprived of their rights to uh, for health care, for education, free education, free health care. And that blow up in the Gezi Park. And uh, how can I say, it? as I said, the Islamization of the Turkey, uh, with uh, prohibition on alcohol, on lifestyle, with uh, seeing the women as a second class uh, member of the society. And that also blew up in the Gezi Park. So, I, I might say that you cannot say Gezi Park was this exactly. It, it, it doesn't have any uh, concrete one aspect. It has one slogan uh, which unites uh, 10 million people. The government must resign. And this uh, desire for resignation indeed comes from these uh, aspects of the anger towards government. But everyone has their own reason for the, to uh, participate in demonstrations. For instance, most of the people in the are were there for uh, independency, quote unquote, of the country. There are uh, 
as many as I cannot count NATO bases in Turkey. And Turkey has been used as a uh, base for the invasions in the Middle East and the operations of the NATO in the Middle East. And that was also a uh, aspect of the uh, anger of the people. So, just as I said, that was an accumulation of anger which uh, just blew up in three days. And as I, I can say that it uh, sustained its mobilization for one and a half months. So how has it affected how the, your party operates now after Gezi Park with all your new members? Do you focus on issues raised in Gezi Park or is it continuing raising the issues that your party Gezi, has always fought for? The Gezi Park residents changed, changed the political air, the arena of the country also. But we cannot say that uh, our party uh, just turned uh, or just take the turns for the uh, for to meet the people. We still uh, we, we are still on our line. We are still uh, tied to our principles, tied to our uh, main principles. Uh, like the working class must be there for a revolution. For uh, Gezi Park was not a revolution in the sense. It was not even a uh, revolutionary situation. Uh, but of course the. This was the most uh, crowded demonstration and most crowded resistance in the Turkish history. Of course, it's, it, it changed not just our party, but all of the organizations in the Turkey, even the party in power, AKP, AKP, changed its way of policy for or the main opposition party, is the CHP, uh, Republican People's Party, changed its way of policies. But we. We can say that we found uh, found new lines to meet the people, meet the people of the Turkey. Uh, for instance, people have been politicized in this process, and they are now looking at the looking for an alternative to these uh, aspects of anger. For instance, they ang they they are angry because of privatization, and they are looking for an anti-privatization uh, organization, which. Uh, they, they are looking for it. They are looking for the left. They are searching for a new alternative which uh, can unite almost all of the peoples in Turkey. We are talking about more than 10 million people. And these 10, these 10 million people are still looking for an alternative. And our party tries to develop policies, tries to uh, meet these uh, seekers in, the, uh, in many aspects to uh, build a new alternative for the Turkey, for the future.